Welcome to the Retirement Made Easy podcast, a show created to be your go-to source for straightforward retirement advice. Best of all, it is presented in a language that you can understand. Are you ready for some straight talk on retirement planning without all the fluff? Well, you found the right podcast. Here's your host, certified financial planner, Greg Gonzalez. Welcome to another episode of the Retirement Made Easy podcast. I'm Greg Gonzalez. Thanks for joining me today. This is episode number 136. Today's episode is going to be a little different. We're going to be going over some questions I've received the last couple of weeks. There must be something going on like in the weather and the water. I don't know, but uh, a lot of uh, a lot of interesting conversations, a lot of good questions people have been asking, especially when it comes to Social Security. There's a lot of misunderstanding I'm finding when it comes to Social Security claiming strategies and that kind of thing. So we'll talk about that. And my hope is that you can learn a thing or two or pick up a, a thing or two when it comes to your own planning or, or maybe talking to, about Social Security with other people. And for those of you that know me, I'm a retirement planner in St. Louis, Missouri, clients now in, I think, 23 different states. So I really, really enjoy talking to people not only that are here in St. Louis, Missouri or Illinois, which is right across the river, uh, but also in, you know, 21 other states. I joke with my wife, it'd be nice if we had some clients in Hawaii or Alaska. We don't yet. So if you're in uh, Hawaii or Alaska and you're looking for a financial advisor, we'd love to come visit you. That'd be a great reason to get away, to go visit a client in Hawaii or uh, Alaska, maybe uh, once or twice a year. That'd be a good vacation. So, But you know, if you've been a listener of this podcast or you're a client of mine, you, you know that I kind of have more of a laid back personality. I, I try to be very honest and straightforward with people all the time, no matter how much it, it helps or hurts. But I'm also very considerate of people's feelings, and people know that I, I'm never critical of people. It's it's always constructive and caring advice. But I met with a couple the, this last week. I just had to share their story. And quite frankly, Social Security was going to be a, a very big part of their retirement income plan. And I was trying to coach them and teach them how to make the most of it. You know, kind of, but they had their minds made up of how it worked and and that kind of thing and and hopefully I was able to kind of teach them and give them some good advice on on how to make the most of it but without giving too much away they were an interesting couple and very very blunt uh, <laughs> And yeah, so so I, I tried to joke with them a little bit, and, you know, and make this planning we're doing a little more enjoyable and hopefully being a little lighthearted. But anyway, I'll share that meeting and, and what I was able to teach them about Social Security and really kind of share my opinion on some things. Not, not that, that my opinion is the end all be all, but I certainly can share my opinion and some of the planning we do and, and why we do it. But also, I've had a few emails recently about this new tax bill that is called the, you may have heard of it, it's the Fair Tax Act. It's a sales tax bill that was introduced by Republicans, House Republicans, to abolish the IRS and really, really change the tax code as we know it. So I've had a few clients and even podcast listeners you know, send me articles and ask me questions about this, asking, you know, what's a good strategy in response to this new bill that might become law called the Fair Tax Act of 2023? In my opinion, well, first off, if you haven't heard about it, what it says, what it proposes is to get rid of the IRS. And so it would get rid of income taxes, federal income taxes across the country. It would essentially institute a 30% sales tax, federal sales tax. And that would be on top of, you know, state and local sales taxes as we know them. And I assume that the thinking here is. And again, I didn't come up with the bill, obviously, but the thinking here is to say, okay, we're going to have a federal sales tax, then we wouldn't need this federal income tax where, what is it, 40% of uh, Americans don't even pay federal income taxes. I think the IRS you know, came out with the numbers, 40.1% of US households did not pay federal income taxes in 2022. So this bill would be, you know, if it became law, it would be monumental, you know, getting rid of federal income taxes, doing away with the IRS, and then sales taxes would be outrageous. So, so think of what inflation would be if you now had a 30% sales tax federal on, on top of already the 
state and local that you're currently paying. So the price of goods and services would go up a lot. However, it would be offset by the amount that you might be saving on federal income taxes. So your paycheck would go up. And supposedly this would do away with the FICA. So what you're paying into Medicare and Social Security as well. So you'd save there as well. So personally, I'm not a a proponent of this. I I think this sounds like a bad idea. We have a tax code that's already a mess. And, you know, just think about what this would do. If you had a federal sales tax of 30% plus state and local on top of that, there'd be a lot of people buying and bartering and selling things on the black market, like Facebook marketplace and person to person, that kind of thing. I think Craigslist would probably go wild. So, of course, my response is going to be to the listeners, a couple of clients is, is, hey, we're not going to change your retirement plans based on a rumor or the possibility that this bill may become law. You know, President Biden said if any tax bill comes across his desk, he's going to veto it. So that's just my personal opinion. But if you feel it's, it's wise to make changes to your retirement plan, your, you know, the strategies that you're implementing because of this new Fair Tax Act that you think is going to become law, certainly by all means act on that. But as far as me and, and, and the clients that, that I serve, we are not yet going to be making any changes until this would become law. And if you haven't heard of this, you know, this proposal, this Fair Tax Act of 2023, it, you know, it's interesting. There's a lot of things online you can read up about it. Again, my personal opinion is that's something that's not going to pass. It's not going to get enough support. On a side note, I think Congress is putting so much time into these bills like this that are just going to get nowhere, and they're a waste of money and time and resources, and they're not going to get enough support from both sides. What they should do is they should focus on the things that, hey, they can have a big impact in, such as Social Security. We've got 77 million baby boomers that are depending, a lot of them are depending on Social Security income as a significant part of their retirement plan. And, you know, the Social Security Trust Fund, you know, it's it's being stretched thin. And 2035 is, is going to be here before you know it. And if no changes are made, there's going to have to be some reductions in Social Security benefits. So I know uh, the Democrat uh, Joe Manchin has brought up, hey, we need to get more people paying in. And, and he his idea is to have more of the, the higher income people paying into Social Security, so raising the earnings cap on you know the FICA tax. You've got other people like uh, Rand Paul, the, I believe he's a senator from uh, Kentucky, and he, he says, he, just the other day, uh, was on during an interview and said that there needs to be a means test, meaning if you'd make too much money and your resources are over a certain point that you basically pay back your social security benefits that you, you you're not entitled to them anymore because you don't need them because of this means testing and he gave himself as an example used himself as an example and said hey I've done quite well I don't need that social security income so just leave it in the system and there were other republicans alongside him that said hey we need to change how the cola for social security is calculated we need to change it once again So it doesn't give people these raises with inflation like it has in the past. Like this past year, it went up 8.7%. So a lot of these people in Congress are saying, hey, we need to change the formula, how we calculate inflation, because we can't afford these 8.7% raises for Social Security recipients. They've also talked about pushing back the full retirement age for for people, for younger folks. And instead of age 67, pushing that back to 70, or even steeper penalties for the people claiming before their full retirement age. All these different ideas that they've come up with of everybody thinks they know how to fix the system. Well, great. This is fixing social security. That's a pressing matter, in my opinion. Let's put some ideas. Let's figure out how we can get more money coming into the system, what we need to do without shorting so many people. And ultimately, without reducing the benefits that a lot of these pre-retirees, soon-to-be retirees, are are counting on or expecting. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox for today, but that's something I would like to see Congress kind of, you know, come together and and vote on some resolutions on how to fix the Social Security Trust Fund. So, um, you know, these benefits are going to be there for people for generations to come. 
Okay, so I wanted to go over some questions that I've been getting uh, in regards to Social Security benefits. And they're across the board because everybody's situation is different. Some people are married, some people are single, some people are divorced, some people are widowed. And depending on your situation, well, that'll dictate, you know, how to best claim Social Security. So I got an email from a listener of the podcast that was was kind of confused about the the spousal benefit versus the survivor benefit. And it seemed, uh, I'm going to call her Lisa, but it, it was a female and she was married and now divorced, been divorced for five years. She was married to her husband for 20 years. And she was saying that she wanted to claim her spousal benefit based on her husband's, her ex-husband's earnings because they were higher than, than hers. And so anyway, she was giving me her husband's benefits and her own benefits based on her earnings history. And she was under the impression that her spousal benefit, because she was married at least 10 years to her ex-husband, she was actually married 20 years and five years has passed. So she meets all the time requirements for claiming on an ex-spouse. So she's good there. But she was under the impression that if she claims at age 62, she can get half of her husband's benefit. And then at full retirement age, which for her is 67, she can then get his entire benefit at his full retirement age. So in her email, she says, is it true that it really goes from half of his benefit at 62 to five years later, his entire benefit? So that would be half to a whole, that's 50% in those five years. So she's a little mistaken here. I think she was misinformed. So at her full retirement age, which is 67, she can get half of her her husband's PIA, primary insurance amount, which is his benefit at his, assuming he's the same age, at his 67th birthday, his full retirement age. So let's assume his benefit was $3,000 per month when he's 67. If she waited until she was 67 to claim, she could get half of that $3,000, which is $1,500 per month. Now, if she claimed when she was 62, they're not going to give her half of his benefit at 67, right? They're not going to give her 1500 bucks when she's 62. It's going to be reduced. And essentially for every month that you wait between 62 and your full retirement age, your spousal benefit gets a little, little bit bigger until you're 67, where the full benefit is 50% of your spouse's full retirement age. That's your, Even though you're divorced, you still get that spousal benefit as if you were still married. Now, the other thing is, if you're still if you're married to someone, you can't get your spousal benefit until your spouse collects, until your spouse actually claims their benefit. With being divorced, it doesn't matter if he claims his benefit or not. So she doesn't have to call her spouse up and go, "Hey, can you claim your benefit already so I can get my spousal benefit?" No, she doesn't have to call her her ex up and and he never even has to know. Now, let's say Let's say she claims her benefit, her full spousal benefit at age 67. She gets half of the $3,000, which is $1,500 a month. Well, her question was, when do I get a big raise when I get my husband's full benefit? Well, if he were to pass away, there's what's called a survivor benefit, where she would then get the $3,000 per month in that scenario. Now, you never want to wish ill will towards somebody, but- if if somebody if something happened to him, yes, she would automatically get a big bump up in her benefit. And her concern there was, well, what if what if he passes away and I don't know? I don't I don't even know about it. And then years and years go by and I'm missing out on a raise from Social Security. Well, the way it works anymore is typically if there's a you know a funeral, the, the funeral home alerts Social Security of the person's passing, and that's kind of how they're notified. So that would be very, very highly unlikely that Social Security would not get informed of his passing. So, so she's okay. Lisa, you're okay there. But anyway, this was a conversation I thought would be helpful for people. Maybe some, you know somebody divorced out there. Now, I I had to share a a very nice, interesting couple that I I met with this past week because they had some questions about Social Security and, and somebody had misinformed them about how the benefits worked. 
So they actually came in the office. A lot of people I meet with over Zoom, but they came in the office and he had a red Make America Great Again hat. And his wife came with him. She was 62 years old and he was 58 years old. So notice there's an age gap. She was 62. He was kind of more of the jokester. He was 58, a little younger, and she was more serious. I'll call them John and Joan. That's not their real names. But anyway, Joan was wanting to claim her social security benefit at age 62. And what she had said was her benefit was lower than her husband, John's. And so she said, well, I would be a fool to just let it sit there and not collect it for the next couple of years because it's, it's a couple of hundred bucks a month. And then when she t- turns full retirement age, if he then collects his benefit at that point, her plan was to then get her spousal benefit, which is 50% of her husband's benefit. And then she would get a big step up, a big raise in her social security benefit. And so I, as I talked to him and kind of asked more questions, um, that's kind of what I got out of them. And that, that was their plan. And I, when I asked her, I said, why did you pick 62 to retire and, and start your social security benefit? And she just looked at me and said, uh, well, I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> so I, anyway, she got me laughing on that. And her husband, he was kind of indifferent whether he was going to keep working or not. And again, he was 58. And he was joking around a lot. So the way the spousal benefit works is to be able to get your spousal benefit, your spouse has to have claimed their own benefit. They changed the way Social Security works a number of years ago. And now if she wanted to get her spousal benefit, she cannot get her spousal benefit until her husband claims. So her strategy, you know, was sound. She can claim her own benefit, a couple hundred bucks a month at age 62. And then whenever she reaches age 67, her husband would then be age 63. If he said, hey, I want to claim my benefit at 63, then she then would be eligible for the spousal benefit. Now, what's interesting is when she's 67, With her plan of collecting her own benefit at 62, at 67, she's not going to be able to get the full spousal benefit of 50% of her husband's. And the reason being is because she collected her own benefit at age 62. So Social Security will penalize her or reduce her spousal benefit because she claimed her own benefit at age 62 in this scenario. However, if she held off until she was 67 to claim her benefit at all, and then her husband claimed his benefit at 63, well, then she would be entitled to that full maximized spousal benefit of 50% of her husband's PIA. So this was news to her. And She kind of had a bad look on her face when I said this. And she said, well, I don't think you're right. And my brother said, I'm right. I can get my benefit at 62. And then when I'm 67, I can hop over to my husband's and get that full spousal benefit, which is half of his. And I told her, I do this a lot. This is all I do for a living. And I am confident that that's the way Social Security works. And your brother you know, he might have been misinformed, but you're, you know, you should probably go and meet with Social Security and and they'll either confirm that I'm right or he's right. And she looked at me and I'll never forget it. She said, are you calling my brother a liar? And and she kind of caught me off guard. I didn't know if she was joking or messing with me or what or serious. But anyway, her husband's looking at me with his, you know, make America great again hat. And uh, I looked at him and I I looked at her and I said, only if he voted for Joe Biden. And I winked at both of them and they both started laughing. So uh, anyway, it was a it was a good meeting. <laughs> and and I understand, you know, a lot of times when somebody's meeting with a financial advisor for the first time, sometimes they're nervous. They they don't know what to expect of the person. They don't know if they're going to get sold something. They don't know if if this financial advisor can help with their specific needs. And for this couple, they they needed help with retirement planning. And that's what I do. That's kind of my specialty. So they came to the right place. And of course, I'm I'm not there to sell them anything. That is totally not how I operate. So 
yeah, they're a nice couple. I found out they they do a lot of mission work, and uh, I know where they go to church. The husband was was very vocal on on his uh, his beliefs and who he voted for. And I'll never forget as they were kind of leaving my office, they said, "Well, we feel good about this. We, you know, when we were coming here, we didn't know if you were one of them or one of us." So getting back to kind of the lesson uh, behind my story is the spousal benefit. Again, the way it works it now is your your spouse has to have claimed their benefit for you to be eligible to get your spousal benefit. So if your spouse is delaying his or her benefit, well, guess what? You can only claim on your benefit until your spouse ends up collecting. So if you claim your benefit first, they're only going to give you the benefit based on your own earnings history. If down the road, then your spouse claims his or her benefit, then you might be entitled to like a like a bump up or a step up if your spousal benefit at that time that you're entitled to is higher than your own benefit that you are currently receiving at that time. And Social Security will go ahead and calculate that. And if if indeed your spousal benefit that you're entitled to is then higher than your own benefit, it'll automatically happen. You don't have to alert Social Security that, oh, hey, my spouse has now claimed their benefit, so I need to start receiving my spousal benefit in lieu of my own benefit that I'm receiving. You don't have to contact Social Security. Again, it's based on your Social Security numbers. And as long as they have, you know, the right person that you're married to, you're fine. They will automatically recalculate that for you. And, you know, you'll see if indeed your spousal benefit is then higher than the benefit you're currently receiving, then you would get a bump up. If not, well, then you just keep receiving the same check like you had been. So I hope that kind of clears it up for you. This episode has been fun, kind of, you know, sharing some stories, talking about what's going on with this tax act. I know we were kind of all over the board, but hopefully, you know, that keeps it interesting. If you do have questions, you know where to find me, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. At the bottom, you can submit your questions. You can sign up for a 30-minute retirement coaching session and then always look for our resources tab where you can find everything from our tax guides to our 2023 market outlook to my three steps to a retirement planning process. They're all there for free on the website. I'll see you next week. And remember, always dream big. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which investments may be appropriate for you, please consult your attorney, tax advisor, or financial advisor prior to investing. This is a hypothetical example and is not representative of any specific investment. Your results may vary. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices mentioned are are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. The Smart Vester program is a directory of investment professionals. Neither Dave Ramsey nor Smart Vester are affiliates of St. Louis Retirement Advisors or LPL Financial. There is no guarantee that a diversified portfolio will enhance overall returns or outperform a non-diversified portfolio. Diversification does not protect against market risk. All investing involves risk, including loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member of FINRA, SIPC. Thank you for listening to the show today. Check us out at our website, retirementmadeeasypodcast.com. And if you want some help from Greg, submit your questions at the bottom of the page or sign up for a 30-minute retirement coaching session with Greg. We'll see you next week.